thank you for joining us at this uh, ECS Facebook Live event on pay. I'm Rachel Shabby, I'm a journalist. I'm joined here this evening with Mark Sawatka, who's the General Secretary of PCS. We're going to be talking for the next uh, 45 minutes or so about the um, pay campaign, along with a lot of other issues, um, how to secure pay increases for PCS members, along with the consult consultative ballot that has just come out as well. We will be taking questions from you all over the next 45 minutes, so please do send those in via Facebook Live or via email. Um, I'm going to start things off this evening with a few questions for Mark. So Mark, first of all, tell us about the pay campaign. Tell us how that's been going. Well, the pay campaign is going very, very well. Um, in that members and our representatives are telling us that there's a real mood that people are glad the union is standing up on their behalf to challenge the dreadful injustice of the government's pay policy. And it's a campaign that I think is um, in the right moment in time, really. Uh, uh, PCS members have had cuts in their living standards for nearly a decade. We've calculated that people are 10% worse off in real terms. That's up to three and a half thousand pounds in cash terms. And despite having the best case in the world, the government has continued to ignore PCS and all public sector unions. And that's why this campaign is so important and we think it's going very well at the moment. Right, so what specifically um, is, are you up to with the campaign and why are we here tonight? What sort of things do you want to be looking at this evening? Well, on Monday we started a ballot of all of our members um, where we're asking them, do they agree that the pay cap should be scrapped for everybody, that they should get above inflation pay rise? And it asks them the question whether they're prepared to take strike action if the government doesn't change course. Uh, so we're having this event because we wanted to give all of our members the chance directly to ask any question that's on their mind, any worries they may have, any uncertainties, or to be clear as why the union is balloting now and what our aims and objectives are. And I'm looking forward really to answering those questions uh, during the course of the next 45 minutes. Excellent. So just before we get into uh, those questions, and we do have quite a few coming in already, although please do keep sending them in. We are on Facebook Live for the next 45 minutes and we really want to cover as many of your questions as we can this evening. Um, just before we do take those questions, why is uh, the PCS undertaking this consultative ballot? Well, the government refuses to listen and uh, we've concluded that this is now a very weak government. Theresa May doesn't have a majority. She's trying to keep treating her own workers in a disgraceful way as if she still had a big parliamentary uh, majority. And if you keep asking the same question every year and the government keeps ignoring you, the conclusion we reach is that it's time that we have to put more pressure on the government. And we're balloting now because we're hoping that PCS members give us a massive mandate, that they turn out in huge numbers, so that before the government announces its budget on the 22nd of November, they will understand that our members have voted to say you must scrap the cap, negotiate pay rises, or we are prepared to take industrial action. So this is a chance for PCS members, really, wherever they work, wherever they live, to directly send a message to Theresa May and Philip Hammond, which is, we're fed up with what you're doing, change course, or we're prepared to do something about it. Right, excellent. So that ballot, um, it did go out a few days ago. Uh, you should have received it by now, if you're a member. If you haven't, uh, in the next few days, please do get in touch uh, with the PCS um, via social media or via local branch. Uh, the ballot, where, where have we got until the 6th of November um, before the ballot closes? So let's go now to some questions from some of you. We are here uh, for the next half hour or so. Please do send in any messages you may have for Mark Sawatka, who's the General Secretary of PCS. He's with us here tonight answering all your questions about the pay campaign, about the consultative ballot and more. Um, so let's go now to a question from a gentleman called Jimmy, Jimmy Gill. He's from the DWP in Cardiff and he says, Mark, how confident can we be about support from other unions and the TUC to smash the cap, particularly when the government will seek to divide workers along occupational grounds and pitch nurses against police officers and civil servants against teachers? What do you think, Mark? 
Well, that's a brilliant question from Jimmy, and it gets right to the heart of, of the matter. Um, we think the government will have a divide and rule strategy. That Theresa May is clearly in a weak position, so she's likely to make some concessions. Uh, and as Jimmy points out, that PCS members will probably be the bottom of Theresa May's priority. So our mission has to be to unite everybody in the public sector. I'm really pleased uh, to be able to say to Jimmy that as a result of what PCS has been doing, we've already got a united TUC position in that the TUC is all off to meet the Chancellor of the Exchequer in two weeks' time. I'll be going as part of that delegation. And we have a united demand. And that demand is scrap the pay cap for every public sector worker, put funding into all parts of the public sector so that we can have pay rises without having to lose jobs. Mm -hmm. And that um, that should take place as a matter of urgency. So we already have a united position. What we're doing with this ballot is if we're able to show that it is possible that the members can beat the 50% balloting threshold and show that they feel strongly, we're hoping to use this to talk to our friends in other unions, to say this is how we did it, why don't we sit down and work together so we're all in a position in the new year, if we have to, to take united action. Our hope is that all the unions will take action together, but the stronger PCS is in this ballot, the more likely it is that that could come about. Right. Jimmy, I hope that's answered your question. We've got plenty more coming in. Uh, we are at a Facebook Live event with the PCA on um, pay. I'm Rachel Shabby. I'm a journalist. I'm talking with Mark Sawatka, who's the General Secretary of the PCS. Please do send in any questions you may have this evening about the pay cap, about the ballot, um, and any other questions you may have that are related to those issues. We are here until 7.45, so please do send in your questions. I'm gonna read out another one. Um, this is from Jason Edwards. He's got a general question for you, Mark. Um, he says, I agree and support the industrial action, but what isn't fair is that all staff will benefit from getting a pay rise, even non-union members, if industrial action was necessary and was a success. Plus, those persons would not have lost out on, on a day's wage by striking. Um, he says, I know it's the nature of the beast, but it's not fair. And possibly this is putting some union members off taking part should the need for industrial action arise. What do you say to that from Jason Edwards? Well, Jason, that's another good question. And let, let me be honest about it. That's a question that members often ask me directly when I go out and do meetings in work places. Um, my answer to that is that it's clear to me that everybody should join the union. That I don't think it is right that people on the back of what union members and unions achieve can freeload and take advantage of it. So my message would be, if you're not in a union, you really should join. Um, but of course, it would be a perverse outcome if we didn't do everything we could because there will be some people who, who might benefit who don't pay union dues. So what I want us to do, particularly at the moment, is to, to say to non-members this question. This is the first ballot that's ever been run where if you're not in the union, if you join, you are able to vote. So my first message would be, if you want to send a signal to the Chancellor of the Exchequer, join the union and vote in this ballot. Also, the people will have seen in our campaign that we've set up a facility where individuals can go on our website, calculate how much they have personally lost, and then automatically send a direct email to the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Non-union members aren't in a position to do that. It's a reason why they should join. So I hope that non-members join the union, but in the meantime, I hope Jason agrees with me that the stronger we as union members send a signal, the stronger position we're in. Hopefully there won't be a strike. Hopefully Theresa May will get the message. But if she don't, we are determined to make a united message. And I would say it's already clear that people are starting to join the union now because they can see we're serious about doing something about it. I hope many more thousands follow suit. Lots of good reasons there to join the union. I hope that answered your question. We've got plenty more coming in. We're here at a Facebook Live event with the PCS looking at pay. I'm Rachel Shabby. I'm with Mark Sawatka, who's the General Secretary of the PCS. He's here to answer all your questions for the next half hour. Please do keep sending them in. Um, we've got plenty more to get through, Mark. Um, this one is from Stuart. He says that things are different in Scotland and asks, what's your view? Okay, thanks Stuart for, for the question. Um, well, things are different in Scotland uh, to some degree, um, but
but this ballot is relevant to members in Scotland as well as everywhere in the UK. So what is correct is that there is a devolved Scottish Government, which the SNP are in power, and they've said they're going to scrap the pay cap for the people that they are directly responsible for. Um, what is also true, however, is they said that, they haven't yet put any money up front, they haven't indicated what those pay rises are, and there's an awful lot to still be done with the SNP. And when I was in Scotland last week, talking to Scottish members, I made the case that, you know, the Scottish Government can't hide behind Theresa May. They've got to now front up and actually match their words with deeds and put their hands in their pocket. It's also the case that in PCS terms, only a third of our members are directly employed by the Scottish Government. Two thirds are employed by Whitehall departments. Uh, and therefore, what we've done with this ballot is to construct it in a way that everybody benefits. So rather than have a ballot that tries to rerun 100 different pay talks, mm -hmm. which would be divisive, we have a unifying message, which is if you vote yes, yes, you're saying you want this, the pay cap scrapped, you then want the Conservative government to put funding in to local government, into the Scottish and Welsh devolved nations, into Northern Ireland, as well as into government departments. So then there can be pay talks where the resource is there to allow for the outcome we want, i.e. above inflation pay rises. So if you work in Scotland, you benefit absolutely as much by voting yes, yes to this ballot as if you work in Westminster or in Cardiff. And that's why we've done it this way, to unify everybody. And the best thing Nicola Sturgeon could do to show she's different from Theresa May is to actually now match her good words with deeds. And that would benefit our members in Scotland, but it would also put more pressure on Theresa May. Right, thanks for that. Hopefully uh, that addresses the question that you put to us, Stuart, in Scotland. Thank you for sending that in. Thank you to everybody for sending these questions in. Uh, we are getting lots of questions from you and we are here for the next half hour with Mark Sawatka from uh, the General Secretary of PCS. We're looking at uh, pay, we're looking at the Scrap the Cap campaign and plenty more. Let me just read out some more of these questions that are coming through to you. Uh, Mark, we've got one from Carl who what says, will striking make a difference? The government is not bothered when we strike. What do you think? Well, I ultimately think striking would make a big difference, but what I would say to Carl is that that is not the question for this moment. Right. This is a consultative ballot, and I think everybody needs to understand that the government changed the laws, so you can't have a legal strike anymore unless five out of ten people participate. So this is a consultative ballot where we're trying to test out the mood of members, where we're going to look at the results we get to work out our strategy moving forward, and put resources in to the areas of the country where people may be unsure, so that when we get to a real legal ballot, we give ourselves the best chance of winning and winning a thumping majority. The question today is not, shall I go on strike today, yeah. is that Theresa May knows and Philip Hammond knows that we are, people are prepared to take that step. That's important, because when I meet Philip Hammond in two weeks' time, I want him to know it's not just me, a union leader, that they constantly denigrate as speaking because they're politically motivated. I want him to know that when I'm speaking, thousands and tens of thousands of members actually supporting what we're doing. That's why we want people to vote yes, yes. When it comes to the question of action somewhere down the track, what we're going to do is ensure that any action we take is not a token, it's not something that people can ignore. We're determined to consider a campaign that really puts pressure on the government. Uh, and in that sense, we're very confident that if members support what we're doing, Theresa May would face considerable pressure. I hope it doesn't get to that, to be honest. Right. But I hope Carl understands that if it does, we think that we can make a big difference if we stand together. Right. Thanks, Mark. There's a lot of uh, really useful information there uh, about the ballot, specifically that this is a consultative ballot. It's running from uh, now, from the 9th of October to the 6th of November. You should, if you're a member, have ballot papers. If you don't have them within a few days, please do get in touch with the PCS via uh, social media or through your local branch so that you can vote. Um, thank you for joining us here. We are at a Facebook Live event for the PCS, looking at pay, looking at the pay, scrap the cap campaign. We are here with Mark Sawatka from the General Secretary of the PCS. He's answering all your questions. And thank you for sending those in. Please do keep them coming. We've got some great questions coming in from all of you, and they are really helping to make this event. So please do keep sending those in. Um, Mark, 
one of these many questions. We have one from Kay. She's asking about the DWP pay deal last year, and she wants to know if it's likely that this campaign will secure a better pay rise. Well, thanks to Kay for, for another excellent question, and, and this is an important one that our members in DWP understand, because we did do a four-year deal in the DWP, but it was done when the government's pay cap was in place. So the negotiations that we did that members supported was an attempt within that pay cap by discussing terms and conditions to get more money on the table, um, and it was successful and members supported it. But if we win this campaign, we expect the DWP to reopen negotiations because of course the premise has changed. Right. They won't have a pay cap, and it won't just be about a small pot of money being divided up mm -hmm. in such a way, it'll be about a bigger pot of money. So everyone in DWP stands to benefit if we get this pay cap scrapped and more funding put in. And that is why, even the DWP is a very important part of PCS with members doing frontline, high pressure work. Um, it's really important they send a very strong signal that they are part of this campaign. So they will benefit along with, with everybody else. Absolutely, thank you so much for uh, sending that question in. Kay, thank you to all of you for sending in questions. Thank you to the hundreds of people who are joining us this evening at this Facebook Live event, PCS, I'm Rachel Shabby, I'm a journalist. I'm here with Mark Sawatka, he's the General Secretary of the PCS. He's here to answer all your questions, so please do send them in. Uh, we're very keen to hear from all of you uh, so that we can ask Mark as many questions as we possibly can in the next 20 minutes or so, so please do stay with us uh, for those. Mark, we've got more questions for you coming in. Um, Dan wants to know what happens if we fall just short of the legal threshold in this ballot? Well, in terms of this ballot, that legally isn't an issue because it's a consultative ballot, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but if we were to get less than a 50% turnout, then obviously that gives us a bit of a problem because we know that our members' case is still as strong as ever. But it would actually tell us that if we move to a legal ballot, there would be an uncertainty as to what the result is. So the best way to deal with that uncertainty is that we don't just meet the threshold, we smash it. And so really what I would like to say here um, is that if you are a PCS member, it's really important that you vote in this ballot. The bigger the turnout, the stronger the signal that it actually sends. Um, because we will make a decision on our next moves depending on the strength of feeling of the members. So I think it's fair to assume that if it was a lot lower than the 50% threshold, our decision is a much harder one to make in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. If we get a huge turnout with a huge yes vote, we know we've got all the cards in our hand. And the way I explained it, I've done a lot of members' meetings recently when I was asked this question, is if we get a huge yes, yes vote and a big turnout, all the cards are in our hand. If we get a ballot here that is a little bit dodgy, then we know we're removing some of our options and the only people who will benefit from that will be the Conservatives who would probably want to carry on with no misery for their own workforce. And that would be a travesty because what I always think we have to get across is any PCS member who's watching this um, or any of their family or PCS members, we know they keep this country running. They do some incredibly important work, collecting tax, paying benefits, keeping the roads safe, looking after our sort of cultural, sort of iconic stuff. And yet they're taken for granted by Theresa May. All we have to do here in a ballot is give her a message, you can't take us for granted. Thanks for that. Thank you so much for sending that in, Dan. And thanks for all the questions coming in and all the hundreds of people who are joining us uh, for this Facebook Live PCS event on pay. It really is your participation and your questions that is making the difference, actually making this event work. So thank you to all of you for joining us. I'm Rachel Shabby. I'm a journalist. I'm here hosting this event with Mark Sawatka. He's the General Secretary of the PCS. We've got plenty more questions coming in for you, Mark. Um, I've got Ian from uh, HMRC in Nottingham. He wants to know, um, what can we say to new members who have joined the civil service recently and have not suffered years of pay restraint? Well, uh, what I think we have to say to them is, is, is two things, really. Whether they've suffered pay restraint or not, the wages they get today have already been affected by mm -hmm. that pay restraint because the wages they're getting should already be higher because our wages have been suppressed. 
Um, but if you've just joined, and even if it's your first job, and even if you've got a secure income for the first time, what this is about is ensuring that your efforts are rewarded fairly and that the union is taken seriously by the government. And therefore, the message would be, yes, yes, strengthens your position in the years ahead. But also, it's a message um, that, that I think says this, that we are taken for granted very often. Whether you've been here five minutes or sort of 15 years, what will become apparent, or has already become apparent, is that the government treats its own workforce worse than anybody else gets treated. Mm -hmm is they sort of take us for granted. And in HMRC, uh, where we have such an important job to collect the tax that is currently not collected, where we have a management cutting thousands of jobs and closing offices, that this is so much more than just a pay balance, it is about uh, you need to treat your workforce and their union with a bit more respect. And voting yes, yes in this ballot, if you're new or if you're long standing, sends management and the government the clearest possible signal. Right, thanks so much um, Ian for sending that in. I hope that answers your question. I hope you're now able to um, have these conversations with uh, new members uh, in Nottingham. Um, we are at a Facebook Live event with PCS discussing pay. I'm Rachel Shabby, I'm a journalist. I'm here with Mark Sawatka, who's the General Secretary for the PCS. We are answering all your questions on pay and on the Scrap the Cap campaign. Thank you so much for sending those in and for watching. Um, we've got a few more questions coming in here, Mark. Um, Tony wants to know if there are any other unions balloting members or are they waiting to see, watching and waiting to see what PCS do? Okay, well on the wider industrial field, we know that the Communication Workers Union have just balloted their members uh, and let's congratulate them, smashed the threshold, yeah. uh, and they've got a huge yes vote. Um, the University and College Workers Union are having a consultative ballot amongst their members and further education on the question of pay. Uh, and we are talking to our colleagues. I think in all honesty, quite a few unions are waiting to see what happens. They're gonna wait and see what happens in the budget, but they also will be looking at what we do in this vote because you know, some unions worry about the 50% threshold, mm -hmm. and we know that it's not easy to beat. And so um, I think it, come, it all comes back to the situation can be changed positively if we show everyone it can be done and we've shown that it can be done. And I would hope that one of the effects of a big yes vote is a message to Theresa May, certainly, but also a message to the trade union movement and all of our comrades in the other unions uh, that you know, if we can do it, we can all do it, and that I think will give us the ability to have a real practical discussion about how to work together moving forward. Um, it must follow that if our vote doesn't go as well as we would like, then you can see the consequences. So th these are quite high stakes, I think, um, and, I, and I, I'm sure members understand that, which yeah. is why voting yes, yes, is such a critical thing for people to do. Yeah. Thanks for sending that question in, Tony. Hope that helped. Thank you all for sending your questions in to this Facebook Live event with PCS. We're discussing everything to do with pay, the Scrap the Cap campaign, and the PCS consultative ballot that is going on right now. I'm Rachel Shabby. I'm a journalist. I'm here with Mark Sawatka. He's the General Secretary of the PCS, and this is your chance to ask him all those questions you've been meaning to ask him all this time. We are here for the next uh, 20 minutes or so, so if you haven't sent in a question yet, please do that now. Um, we have got some more questions coming in for you, Mark. Um, one from uh, Jillian, or should that be Jillian? I'm not sure. Sorry if that was a typo. She wants some clarification, so asking for clarification over um, which PCS members are covered uh, by the CAP. Does it include arm's length bodies? Yeah, I mean, this ballot is for all public sector members. Uh, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're all covered by it because, of course, the 1% cap has actually framed how public sector pay is operated. Uh, and therefore, if people are in arm's length bodies, then we want people to vote yes. Because the idea here, and this is critical in the question, is that we're asking for funding to be made available to the government for the whole of the public sector including arm's length bodies, right. to allow for these negotiations to take place. And I think that's the key thing to really understand, is that um, 
we're not trying to run a hundred odd paid negotiations centrally. We're mm -hmm. trying to create a framework that everybody can have a chance of a properly negotiated pay rise above the rate of inflation. So you know whether you work in a arm's length body, whether you work in a small civil service department or a huge government department, we all stand to gain if our aspirations were to be met. And to that end, the more united we are, the less chance there is of dividing the world. And I think that's an important point to, for us to keep stressing. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that. Thank you for sending in all your questions to this Facebook Live event, PCS. We're looking at everything to do with pay and the PCS pay campaign. I'm here with Mark Sawatka, he's the General Secretary of the PCS. I'm journalist Rachel Shabby. We're here for another 20 minutes or so, so please do send in all those questions you wanted to ask Mark but never got the chance to. This is your chance tonight to get him on the sofa with your question. Um, we've got one coming in here from Dave Lunn, who asks what lessons can be learned from uh, CWU's massive turnout and yes vote? Well, that's a great question, because obviously the CWU are the first union in Britain to have a national ballot and yep. beat the, the Conservative thresholds. Uh, so we have actually uh, been in very close contact with the mm -hmm. CWU in terms of the way that we have devised uh, our ballot. In fact, this Facebook Live event has in part come from conversations with the CWU. It's one of the devices that they use to talk to as many members as they could. Um, so we understand that the key things that the CWU did was communicate to members, realise the importance of our representatives, our reps on the ground are the key, to talk face to face with as many members as possible, and is to ensure that people feel that they're part of the ballot and it is going to make a difference. So apart from the Facebook Live event and the ballot itself, you know, our NEC members and our activists have spent the last few weeks travelling the country, meeting with reps, briefing reps. Our staff are out there, not just leafleting, but engaging in large and small meetings to empower people on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we're digesting and hopefully learning those messages. And the key, I think, really for a union has to be to understand that all members need to understand the issues, have confidence that they've got and what we're doing can make a difference. And the key to that, I think, is talking to as many of them as we can. Uh, and that means face-to-face -face contact. So I really would like to say, if anyone is watching this tonight, who's not a PCS rep, but is a member, why don't you think about becoming a rep? If you're in an office where you haven't got a rep, then you know we love you to just help us, because the more people on the ground who can actually talk to members in a way that we're chatting tonight, the better chance, not just the union has a winning this ballot, but actually being stronger moving forward. And that's the key lesson, I think, the CWU tells us once we're trying to win it. Yeah, there you go. Ask the Wodka question. He asks you one right back. Um, we are here on a Facebook Live event with PCS looking at pay, looking at the PCS pay campaign. Thank you all for joining us and thank you all for sending in these questions. It's your participation and your questions that are making this event work. Hopefully it's working for you as well. Please do let us know if you have any more questions that you'd like to ask Mark, Mark about any of these issues. Um, Mark, we do have a few more questions coming in. Um, Thomas has asked about uh, pay for deaf and disabled people. How do we ensure equal pay for disabled people is central to everything that we fight for? Well, we take very seriously the campaign for equal pay and in fact uh, are, are currently taking legal cases on the very question of, of equal pay. Um, uh, and so to my mind, the centrality of that question, the answer really, is the stronger the union and the more we're seen to cover and take up the issues for all of our members, the better chance we are of resolving many problems that exist. So we were successful, again, in, in getting the government to put more money in, which is the core demand of this. Yeah. It gives you the ability in, in real terms to address some long-term problems. The problem at the moment is if the pot or the cake is so tiny, trying to distribute that is impossible to do justice to, whether it's equal pay issues, um, whether it's the issues of people progressing up the pay scales on the basis of sort of, um, sort of time, you know, length of time served, uh, whether it's dealing uh, with long-standing sort of injustice in the pay system. You can't possibly do that when you have a 1% envelope. 
if you have a 5% envelope, you can seriously address everybody's living standards and also try and address equal pay and other related issues. And so the key is get a bigger cake, isn't it really? It's easier to divide up if the cake's bigger. The best way to get a bigger cake is put Theresa May and Philip Hammond to know our members need business. And that means voting yes, yes. Thanks so much for that question, Thomas. Thank you all for sending in all your questions to this Facebook Live event with PCS. We're looking at pay, we're looking at the Scrap the Cap campaign and all related issues. I'm Rachel Shabby, I'm a journalist. I'm here with Marcel Watka, who's the General Secretary of the PCS. He is here on the sofa just for you, just to answer your questions. Please keep them coming in. We're here for another 10, 15 minutes, so not long. Uh, to get any questions you may have through to us on Facebook Live. Mark, a couple more questions coming in for you. Joanne wants to know, Mark, if you agree that we need a return to national pay bargaining. Uh, I completely agree. <laughs> uh, it's been a long-standing aspiration of the union. And for anyone who may not understand what that means, who hasn't been here that long, we used to have a situation where you'd have one set of talks with the government to sort out civil service pay. And then the Conservatives, uh, many, many years ago, recognised that we will make the union weaker if we carve it up into hundreds of different pay negotiations. Uh, so we do want national pay back. We think there should be rates for the job nationally negotiated. Um, but that is not on the table today. Um, interestingly, that is on the table in terms of uh, we put forward our thoughts and indeed we are in discussions uh, with opposition parties, particularly Jeremy Corbyn, about the need for national pay bargaining in the civil service. And he's told us that he would reinstate national pay bargaining. But I suppose for where we are today, again, the question comes back, is if they're forced to give a bigger pot, and they're forced to understand that we have to have better pay rises, then I think if they take time to think about it, they would then understand that actually it's an inefficient, divisive way to then force your own management to have 120 talks when you have one. It also, incidentally, creates an internal market where well-trained, experienced, and uh, very sort of high-performing civil servants leave one department for another because they pay slightly more when their skills are desperately needed in the department they're in. It makes no sense. But yes, we need national pay bargaining back, um, and that is an aspiration that we want to fulfill. But in the here and now, this ballot being a strong yes, gives us the opportunity to get the cake bigger and have a real conversation, hopefully a lot more controlled than that in the future. Joanne, thanks for that. Question is really interesting to hear Mark um, answer that. We're at a, a PCS Facebook Live event looking at pay, looking at the pay campaign. Um, just a lot of feedback coming in from the hundreds of you who are watching this event. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sending in your questions and your feedback. We've had some people commented that they have voted yes and yes. We have some members who have voted yes while watching. So there you go, that's your powers of persuasion, Mark. If you do want to vote yes while watching, you should already have a ballot. You should have received that over the next few days. Uh, the ballot is open until the 6th of November. If you haven't received your ballot in the next couple of days, then please do get in touch with the PCS via social media or get in touch through your local branch. We are here for just a few more minutes of Facebook Live event with PCS. I'm Rachel Shabby, journalist. I'm here with Mark Sawatka, who's the General Secretary of the PCS, answering all your questions very thoroughly on this black sofa. We have um, Paul, who has asked if Theresa May is listening. I assume he doesn't mean to this Facebook Live event, although maybe she is. Who knows? I think he probably means to the pay campaign, Mark. Is she listening? Are you, what kind of feedback are you getting from conversations? Okay, can I just say before answering that, yes. if anybody is voting yes, yes, that's fantastic. You've already made a big step. Can I also urge you to go back into work tomorrow and urge your colleagues to vote yes, yes. And if you know there's a non-union member, get them to join the union to vote yes, yes. Um, I'm not is, happy with just the yes, yes. Is, uh, you you know, is, uh, yes. <laughs> is Theresa May listening? I think Theresa May is a woman under enormous pressure. And it's clear that in the general election that, uh, and the result that she got made it clear to her she had to do something about some parts of public sector pay. So in a typical way, they will try to do as little as they can get away with. And they will try to offer some divisive, 
concessions. Um, and we've already seen them talk about people who wear uniforms as being the most important. And, and our answer to that has been, of course, nurses and the police and the fire service are critical, but actually they all depend on a team of people. We're all important. So I think she is listening to the fact that she can't ignore public sector pay. But I think she needs to get a much louder message that she needs to listen to all public sector workers. And therefore, this ballot is actually quite significant because if she thinks she's going to get away with a few concessions, this is a chance. Let's remember, PCS members work directly, are employed by the government in a sense. They are civil servants. And if her own workforce sends her some resounding yes, yes message, well, if she isn't listening enough, hopefully she listen a lot closer to us. And so that's what I would say to the state. I don't doubt Theresa May is going to make some concessions. I think she politically has to. I think the question is, will she make them to everybody? And the best way of ensuring that we get some is to vote yes, yes in this ballot. Uh, because if I was to make an educated guess, she has a priority order. And I think we would be way down her priority order. She says a lot about the value she puts on her tax collectors, benefit officers, border cards, people in our prisons. You know, these are the people she relies on, but actually just she treats with disdain. So if she's not listening, a yes, yes vote will hopefully make her listen. You are doing vital, essential work for this country, as you say. Um, thank you for all of us joining, all of you joining us at this uh, PCS Facebook Live event. Just a reminder, this event will end in a few minutes, but don't worry. It will be available to watch later and you can also share it. Uh, if you think there are people who should be watching, uh, Mark Sawatka, General Secretary from PCS, answer all your questions on the PAY campaign, on the Scrap the Cap campaign. You can do so after this event has ended. But while it is still going, please do keep sending in your excellent questions. And thank you to the hundreds of you who are watching this event and to those of you sending in questions. Um, we have got a couple more for you, Mark. Um, Sean has asked about the Fighting Fund. How can we raise more money to support strike action? Okay, well, that's another good question. Um, and um, we do want to raise money for our Fighting Fund because we use it, for anyone who doesn't know what it is, it's a fund that we set up to help support PCS members when we take strike action. Uh, because we recognise that our members are so poorly paid, many of them, that it's a very hard decision to go on strike. Um, and at the moment, it's funding some really important strikes. Um, you know, we have a strike at the moment in the DWP in Sheffield, where people have been on strike for weeks to keep a job centre open, to provide a service to the public in the poorest part of Sheffield. It's an amazing strike, and we are supporting those members through the Fighting Fund. So if you are a PCS member, it would be very nice if you could contribute. We ask people to think about a two pound a month contribution. Um, every penny donated goes into PCS members on strike to help them maintain their financial commitments whilst taking a big step of, uh, of union and industrial action. But we are also in the union going to have a conversation, I think, over the next few months, uh, probably resulting in our annual conference, which is rep selected by members making decisions uh, about whether we need to do more to raise huge amounts of money. Um, so that's a conversation we'll have over the next few months, but in the here and now, if you don't donate anything, please consider donating because if people are called out or they vote to go on strike, this is the way that we help them financially. Thanks so much for sending that question in. Uh, Sean, thanks to all of you who are sending all your questions into this Facebook Live event with the PCS, with Mark Sawatka, General Secretary of the PCS. We're looking at the pay campaign. Many, many questions coming in, all of them great questions to put to Mark. We've only got a few minutes left, so apologies if we don't get a chance but we will try and get through all your questions. And this event will be available to watch later and to share with your friends, colleagues, family, whoever you'd like to share it with. I do want to just ask you one question um, about the compensation scheme market came through earlier. Um, and it's to ask, it's from Paul Chapnell um, in London, and it's asking how the PCS is handling the government's new proposal for the CSCS and the real possibility that um, there will be one worse than that agreed last year, however contentiously and before the court case, that it could be imposed. Okay. 
So I'm glad this question has come mm -hmm. up because actually I'm going to answer it by making the point that the reason we defeated the government in court is because members of PCS stuck together and they voted the 96% majority to reject the government's appalling cuts in the compensation scheme. And on the back of our members casting that vote, we took legal action in the High Court and we defeated the government. So the signal it sends actually is this union makes a difference, you as members make a difference, uh, and let's take that message into the pay ballot. Because nobody gave us a prayer in actually defeating the government on the compensation scheme. The result of that victory is as we're sitting here, <laughs> there are people calculating the thousands of pounds extra that people will get shortly mm -hmm. as a result of what we did. So now the government's response seems to be, having accepted that we defeated them, they've dropped their appeal in the High Court, and they've announced a snap consultation, and they're threatening to say, well, we're gonna make it even worse, and that's obviously what the question is getting at. Our answer is, uh, well, try if you dare. We will be at the negotiating table on behalf of our members, telling the government they've got to learn the lessons of their legal defeat, that a consultation must be meaningful, that means you have to be prepared to compromise, we will not let you get away with saying, agree a worse scheme or we won't talk to you, because last time they tried that, they lost in court. So we are going to go and argue for PCS members' terms and conditions, we're going to put forward counter-proposals, and we're going to refuse to be browbeaten. And I think if we do that, then actually we can build on our victory in the High Court, and that tells us really how we can win on pay, because it's a simple message really, as we're talking about pay ballot, it was members vote the compensation ballot, that led to this stunning legal victory and many of their colleagues now getting thousands of pounds mm. extra. Let's do that on pay. And that sends the government the signal really, which is talk to us seriously about the compensation scheme, talk to us seriously about a budget pension pay rate. It's a great question, Paul. Thanks for sending that in. Uh, we are with the PCS, Mark Sawatka, General Secretary of PCS, looking at the uh, pay campaign and the ballot. We only have a few minutes left. Thank you so much to the hundreds of you who have joined us and have sent in questions. I think we're going to push it and ask a few more of these questions. Yep, we're going to do it. We're going to ask a couple more. Um, Chris has asked uh, what you're doing to lobby the Shadow Front Bench. Okay, so um, uh, another excellent question. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that we uh, are very closely working with the Labour front bench. Um, the Shadow Chancellor and uh, Jeremy Corbyn have both publicly said they believe the cap should be scrapped, uh, that we should have national pay bargaining back in the, uh, in the civil service, and that they support the campaigns of the trade unions. So what we're hoping to happen is that political pressure will be put on the government in Parliament, um, and that that political pressure will be sort of, if you like, boast, boosted by the fact that there is also real pressure out in our communities and in our offices uh, by members voting in the ballot. And we see this very much um, as two ways of telling Theresa May she can't get away with it. So I'm pleased to tell anybody watching here that we have the clear support of Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell. They've made that very, very public and we appreciate it. And we think they understand that actually PCS members and all public sector workers play a vital role in this country and they should not be penalised because they choose to serve the public. They should actually be rewarded in a proper way. Um, so we're going to stay close with the uh, shadow, shadow front, front bench in the period ahead. Thanks for that great question. Uh, Chris, we are coming to the end, sadly, of this Facebook Live event uh, with PCS. I'm Rachel Shabby, I'm a journalist. I'm here with Mark Sawatka, who's the General Secretary of the PCS. He has been answering all your questions. Thank you so much for sending those questions in. And apologies if we did not get time to get to your question, uh, but hopefully you've uh, enjoyed listening to Mark answer everyone else's questions. And uh, just a reminder that you can watch this Facebook Live event after it has finished. It will be available to watch and to share later. Um, Mark, just to wrap this up, um, can you um, let us know if this is going to be repeated? Is there going to be another Facebook Live event? And also, do you have a closing message for all PCS members? Okay, well, well it's, it's been uh, a great evening in terms of, I think, they've been fantastic questions. Um, yeah. 
and uh, I hope that this gets a lot of people looking at it and it's shared a lot uh, because we want people to know the answers to the questions because we hope it persuades them to vote yes, yes. So certainly I think we'll be thinking about doing another event during the campaign and certainly when the compensation scheme talks get underway, it's something that I, I would like us to think about doing again so we can answer the members' questions directly. So we'll have a look at how it's gone. Um, but I've certainly enjoyed doing it, and I hope people feel we've answered their questions. But my, my closing message really would be, would, would be this, that this is a moment for every PCS member to directly say to Theresa May and Philip Hammond, you have to change course. You cannot continue to cut the pay of loyal men and women who are serving the people of this country, who uh, make sure this country takes over, and treat them as though you, know, you actually have no regard for them whatsoever. If we don't stop it, this will carry on. The government's already said they're going to keep this policy for us until 2020. By 2020, we'll be 20% worse off in real terms. So sending a yes, yes message and a huge turnout actually gives us all the cards that we need to put the maximum pressure on to get a decent outcome. It also means that the union sends a very public message, which is our members are not going to be taken for granted any longer. So I hope that people vote yes, yes, that they urge their colleagues to vote yes, yes, that people who are not in the union will join the union, and that we can, over the next few weeks, maximise the pressure on Philip Hammond, so when he gets up in the budget, he does the right thing. He should also know that if he continues to treat us in the way that he has, a big yes vote means we can force him to change direction. That's what's at stake for all of us. I want to say thank you to all PCS members for the brilliant job they do, urgent to vote yes, yes, and let's get to a situation where people do not have a further cut in their living standards, that we can get back to a position where maybe the people can start doing better than the rate of inflation and feeling that they're actually treated in the way that their commitment really should be treated. Thank you so much to everyone uh, who has joined us for this Facebook Live event. We have been at the PCS with Mark Sawodka, who's the General Secretary of the PCS, looking at the pay campaign. Thanks to everybody who sent in those excellent questions and for watching. Um, please do like the page if you have enjoyed this. Please do share the video when we post it in a short while. Um, thanks again for being a part of this discussion. You have made it a discussion and we've enjoyed having you with us. Thanks to Mark, and hopefully, uh, thank you also to Richard, I'm sorry. Thank you to Richard the signer. And hopefully we will see you all again on Facebook Live soon. Bye-bye.